Hello everyone, Bob here. Uh, today we are going to talk about the third James Bond movie, uh, 1964's Goldfinger. This film was directed by Guy Hamilton after there was a dispute between Terrence Young and the producers over uh, contract negotiations. Guy Hamilton was actually asked to direct Dr. No and he turned it down. Uh, Guy Hamilton also wanted to make Bond more of a real person, less of what he considered a superhero. So he made the villains stronger to try to make up for the uh, seeming invincibility of the super spy 007. So a couple of interesting facts about Goldfinger. It is considered to be the first Bond blockbuster as its budget was $3 million, which was equal to the budgets for Dr. No and From Russia With Love combined. Um, this is also the first Bond film to feature a large amount of tongue-in-cheek uh, humor, as well as um, an expansive library of gadgets. And this is also, speaking of gadgets, the first time that Bond actually visits Q Branch. And um, perhaps even more uh, interesting in the s scheme of the Bond franchise, this is the first film in which uh, the main title song had lyrics that were sung during the opening credit sequence. And what a song it was to uh, start with. Plot wise, uh, Bond's on this mission to blow up like this uh, drug operation um, in Latin America. And uh, that's for the pre, uh, that's for the title sequence. And after the title sequence, he's on vacation in Miami when uh, Felix Leiter, his friend who was Jack Lord in, in the first film, but he's um, been recast in this one, uh, gives him uh, some instructions from M that he's supposed to spy on um, or at Goldfinger. Well, Bond discovers he's cheating and um, helps straighten that situation out. And he, uh, Bond has some more encounters with him. I'm not gonna get too into it because of spoilers. Uh, I imagine most of you have seen it, but we'll talk about all that stuff here but post uh, spoiler warning. But um, after several more encounters, Bond is captured and he learns of Goldfinger's Operation Grand Slam and uh, how it involves Fort Knox. This film is the height of Connery era Bond. Everything from the one-liners to the plot itself to the, um, to the music in this one, it was all on point. This is easily the best spy film of the 1960s. And it's definitely the best uh, of the Connery Bunch of Bond films. And there is an argument to be made that this is the best Bond film of all time. Is it my favorite? It's one of them. I don't know if I could... There's, As you'll find out as I go through these movies, there are two or three that I really, really like. And... I don't know I could pick one or the other, and honestly, it would depend on what day you asked me, but this is an excellent Bond film. I'm going to give it a final rating of 9.5 out of 10. I very highly recommend, if you see no other Bond film, especially from the Connery era, this is the one to see. It's where you get the Aston Martin comes in. It's This is Bond. This is the epitome of Bond in that era. And now we're going to switch over to the spoiler side of things. So if you haven't seen this film, uh, step away from this video now. And if you have, uh, we'll see you here after the warning card. So uh, when Bo after Bond discovers that Goldfinger's cheating at the card game, um, he, uh, Goldfinger had an accomplice, uh, Jill Masterson, and uh, they uh, kind of have an intimate encounter, and then um, she is killed by an unseen assailant, and uh, Bond's bummed out about that, and he, of course, wants to meet Goldfinger socially, so they play around the golf, and after some shenanigans there, uh, having to do switching the ball out, uh, Bond beats him, and Goldfinger warns him not to come back. And then, of course, uh, you have Oddjob throwing the hat for the first time. Bond continues to follow Goldfinger and is ultimately captured. 
but he's heard enough to know about Operation Grand Slam and um, fudges his way out of it. This is the the part where um, Bond says, do you expect me to talk? And Goldfinger says, no, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. This is where he uh, he doesn't really know what the plot is, but he kind of BSs his way through it enough that uh, he convinces him to keep him alive. Goldfinger then relocates to the U.S., uh, Bond uh, escapes the little holding room he's in and listens to the uh, plot for Operation Grand Slam, which at that point he uh, thinks is a heist of Fort Knox, which, uh, as we find out later, um, no, he's just going to use a nuclear weapon to irradiate all the gold so that um, his stockpile's worth more. Uh, the mobsters, after providing their service, he... A goldfinger blurs in there because he's promised each of them a million dollars. Uh, they are killed. Anyway, Bond ends up spending some time with uh, Goldfinger's personal pilot, uh, Pussy Galore is her name. And uh, after they have an intimate encounter, she ends up switching sides and uh, contacts the, the U.S. government and uh, switches out the canisters of what they're going to use to... Uh, put the guards to sleep, but it actually would have killed them. And afterwards, um, there's a, there's a big fight, big struggle. Um, Bond does manage to stop the nuclear device, um, right at the time says zero, zero seven. Like I said, it's tongue in cheek humor in this one. And, uh, there's one more encounter with Goldfinger in which Goldfinger's killed. And, uh, that's basically the plot of this one. Uh, Felix Slider. Um, normally, you may have noticed that I don't uh, talk about uh, Money Penny or M or Q again after I've mentioned them the first time. Um, however, I will mention them after they have been recast. And uh, uh, Felix Slider ha was recast in this one. He plays played by um, the guy's name is C E C uh, Linder, and uh, Felix Slider. He's Felix Leiter, he has the information for uh, Bond. He is his CIA counterpart. Jill Masterson works at the hotel Bond staying at while on vacation in Miami, and she is actually helping Goldfinger cheat. Um, after uh, Bond ruins that, uh, Jill Masterson uh, and Bond spend some time together, and she is the one killed by the assassin, and... Uh, she is killed because she's dipped in uh, the gold paint and it's not allowed the skin to breathe. Uh, gold, uh, gold. Uh, Mythbusters uh, kind of put some doubt on that, but they also said that the, uh, their, her, uh, the Mythbuster that was painted in gold said that body temperature started to do some funny things. So they didn't really know what would happen with it. But uh, that is the iconic uh, moment and from this film is the girl dipped in the gold paint. Jill Masterson is played by Shirley Eaton. Tilly Masterson is played by Tanya Mallet, and she is on a vendetta uh, against Goldfinger for the death of her sister. Um, she tries taking a shot at him, she misses, but uh, her and Bond team up for a very short period of time before, unfortunately, uh, Tilly Masterson is killed by Odd Job and the throwing of the hat. Pussy Galore, as I mentioned a little bit ago, is uh, Goldfinger's personal pilot. Um, she's played by uh, Honor Blackman, who we uh, just lost not too long ago this year. And uh, after her intermittent encounter with Bond, um, she switches sides and saves the day. All right, Goldfinger, uh, played by Gert uh, Frobe. His uh, lines were actually dubbed by someone else, but I am unsure of who actually uh, was was the voice of Goldfinger. But he wanted to um, irradiate the gold at uh, Fort Knox so that his personal supply was worth quite a little bit. As I mentioned earlier, um, 
that fails and uh him and bond get in a fight later on uh, on a plane and uh, a window gets shot out and goldfinger gets uh, sucked out of the airplane odd job is one of the most iconic uh, henchmen in the bond franchise he's played by harold sakata he uh is known for throwing his hat he throws it whenever he throws it it breaks people's neck it's got i don't know if it's got like a some metal in it or what but it's um a lethal weapon and it is like i say one of the most iconic uh villains or henchmen uh from the whole franchise then lastly we have uh another henchman named uh kish and he uh is goldfinger's second in command he leads the army uh, Goldfinger's false army on Fort Knox and he is abandoned by Goldfinger uh, to presumably die. He tries to stop the nuclear bomb but uh, Oddjob throws him off a railing there in Fort Knox and it kills him. Okay, stats for this one. Uh, Bond kills 9, so that brings the Connery Bond total up to 18. Goldfinger kills 20, most of which are, uh, the, is, are the mobsters who are killed in the uh, scene where he sh tells them part of Operation Grand Slam, and uh, plus several are killed in the standoff between Goldfinger's forces and uh, the U.S. Uh, military forces at Fort Knox, but I did not get any kind of account on that because it's kind of it's so quick and happens so fast that it's kind of hard to get an accurate one. Like I say, Goldfinger is the absolute epitome of the James Bond movies. It is one you must watch. I highly recommend it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content of this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Just search for Bob the Film Guy. And for now, this is Bob signing off.